Hi, everybody. Welcome to um, Study Abroad Week, Arcadia Info Information about England, Scotland, and Ireland. Um, I, with no, without any further ado, I will hand it over to Wendy. Excellent. Thanks, Sarah. Um, hi, all. My name is Wendy Lombardo, and I'm the Associate Director of Institutional Relations. Um, I did put in the chat a link so that if you want to get into our, um, onto our page as a uh, inquiry that'll give us your information so that we can stay in touch with you and give you updates and info about deadlines and all of those things that you need to know about programming. So today, as Sarah said, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Arcadia and the programs that we offer for um, England, Scotland, and Wales. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of Arcadia. Arcadia is an actual university just outside of Philadelphia. We've been doing study abroad for many, many decades. So uh, we know what we're doing and we do it well. So we're happy to work with Northwestern and um, the staff and students there. So we've had lots of students from Northwestern on our programs. Um, if you would like to be in touch with any of them, you can certainly be in touch with us or with the study abroad office and we can get you in touch with some of our alumni, although some of them will maybe a little bit further back since uh, the pandemic, we haven't had a ton of, of students abroad, but we have had students abroad all through um, this uh, period of COVID, thankfully, uh, and students are having great experiences, a little bit different than what study abroad has been in the past, but they've had uh, wonderful experiences and are doing some exploring in the countries that they're in and all of those great things. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, mostly about our semester and year long programs. Um, I'll touch a bit on some STEM opportunities and um, some summer abroad opportunities as well. First off, um, one of the most helpful tools on our website is our program finder. And I'm gonna link into this a little bit later, but I'm gonna just talk about it quickly now. So in our program finder, what you can do is choose the area of study that you're looking for, the time frame you're looking for, and the countries that you're looking for. And what will, this will do is give you, narrow down your options. Arcadia runs over a hundred programs. So not all of them are approved by uh, Northwestern, but what this does is narrow down your options and then to see what has the academic fields that you're looking for. And then you also can cross-reference that with what is approved by Northwestern. Like I said, I'm gonna go into this a little bit later. So these are all the programs that are approved by Northwestern by country. Um, I have all the countries, including Australia, New Zealand, which I did an info session for earlier this week. So if you're interested in that, there is a recording for that. That'll be up on your website as well. But today I'm going to talk specifically about our programs in the UK and Ireland. Um, and so those are the ones up on the top. And I'm going to jump right into those now so that we can get through them since there's quite a few. Um, so first I'm going to talk about King's College. Uh, King's College is located right in, in uh, central London, um, very highly ranked and has many disciplines, um, all the, everything from the sciences to history, film and television, physics, um, and that kind of stuff. They also are the location of the health and society program that um, I know some students are interested in at Northwestern. The health and society program is specific to pre-med. So if you have in, uh, interest about that, um, I'm happy to answer questions about that as well. King's has a very strong support network. Um, and uh, it's a very popular and competitive program and it has an early deadline. And I'll talk a little bit more about deadlines, but um, one of the things to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure you're, you're uh, hitting the deadlines both for Northwestern and for the program that you're applying for through Arcadia. Um, one of the things about King's is while it is centrally located, the campus itself, the housing that um, our students are in are around London zones one and two. And what that means is that it, that not all the housing is right within uh, the campus of, of King's. Um, it means it can be about a 45 minute or so commute from where you're living to where you're taking classes. Um, some housing might be closer, but I would say the majority of our students are a little bit outside of, uh, of outside of that central area. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and uh, I think that's about with Kings. Moving on to Goldsmiths. Uh, no, uh, Goldsmiths is located in Southeast London. Um, it's a really vibrant uh, uh, part of um, London. 
Some of the strengths uh, for how or for academics include uh, econ, political science, psychology, anthropology, physics, and math. Um, it, the nice thing about Goldsmiths is it's more of a campus um, feel. So where you're living and where you're taking classes are all very close. So you're living within a you know five ten minute walk at most to the main campus buildings. Um, the other nice thing about Goldsmiths is that courses are confirmed before you start the program. Um, with all of our programs, including King's and all the ones that I'll talk about, we always tell students to make sure you're choosing at least twice as many programs as what you need, um, just in case you need some backups. So once you get there, if there's uh, some issues with the course that you're cho you've chosen, whether it's not what you expected or the timetabling um, is off, that you have some opportunities there to make some changes. Um, and the, again, it, while it's in East London, it's a very easy commute into the Central Business District of London, um, but it's more of a, a working class neighborhood and really an up and coming trendy area of, of London. Uh, so moving on to Queen Mary, which is on uh, located in East London, so on the other side, um, you are again on more of a campus um, experience. So again, you're living and housing housed right on campus. So you don't have to worry about that 45 minute commute with places like King's. Um, Queen Mary has great strengths in history, bio, chemistry, film, um, film and TV, theater, econ, computer science, uh, English and math. Um, Another good, the good thing about Queen Mary is that again, class registration is completed. Classes, and as I said, you're going to be uh, ha all of these uh, programs have a um, wide variety of courses. And the nice thing about all of them is that you can do classes in your major as well as do courses across the curriculum. Uh, moving on to the last option in England, um, that's the University of Oxford, which is about an hour outside of London. Um, obviously one of the top universities in the world and very challenging in terms of um, the teaching style because it's very different than what our students are used to in the US. Um, it's more of a tutorial or it is a tutorial uh, style. And what that means is that you are taking classes, your classes are really with a tutor. So it might be one or two or three students to one tutor. So you're not sitting in a big classroom, you're not doing lecture, you know, you're more doing a back and forth with the tutor. The tutor will give you um, information and uh, readings and things like that. And you'll have a dynamic discussion with the tutor. Part of that may also be that the tutor is asking you to go to different lectures that are on campus to help um, learn more about the topic that you're doing your tutorial with. Um, Arcadia partners with six different colleges at Oxford and depending on what your area of study is, it may you may fit better into one of the colleges or another. We have um, a, a whole hour long um, webinar about Oxford that I can share, make sure I share with Sarah so that it might be able to be linked to this, but it talks really about the tutorial system, the different colleges and the different things that are there. Um, again, very multidisciplinary. Typically you do a major class and a minor class um, at Oxford and everything from history to econ, art history, psychology, computer science, um, math, English, all sorts of things there. So then moving on to Scotland, um, the University of Edinburgh is listen, uh, located in the capital city of um, Scotland, and they have an extensive range of courses in arts and humanities and social sciences, moving on to engineering, um, languages, divinity studies, law, medicine, um, and music and business. So lots of courses opening to students. There's a very active range of clubs and societies and volunteer opportunities. Um, Edinburgh is a great city. The university itself is really interspersed within the city. So you have um, you know, where you're living and where you're taking classes are pretty close, usually within a um, 15 minute walk um, to campus. And um, most of the housing options that I'm talking about are self-catered housing options. We do have some catered options where you can get on a meal plan, but many of the opportunities that I'm talking about are self-catered. Um, and I'll go back into that a little bit when I go back to our website. 
Uh, moving on to St. Andrews. Uh, St. Andrews is in a small town uh, right on the coast. Um, so if you obviously probably know a lot about if you're into golf, um, St. Andrews is the place where golf started. Um, it has a very active student life. Um, if uh, with those of you, because you're uh, so close to Lake Michigan, maybe you do a, a dip into Lake Michigan. They also have uh, the May dip in the North Sea. Um, it's highly academic. Uh, ranked top um, top university in Scotland and third in the UK. Um, and St. Andrews has, again, a very wide range of co uh, courses from religious studies, anthropology, politics, um, international studies, into the sciences, physics, math, computer science, um, and um, have some really good, uh, strong reputation in areas like sustainable development, terrorism, and political violence. Um, so there's some really good uh, academic work happening there for that. Um, and then moving on to the University of Glasgow. Glasgow is, uh, the university is in the west end of the city. Um, Glasgow is a, an industrial city that has regenerated itself um, into a center for arts, theater. Um, it's very, for me, I, I really love the, um, the city of Glasgow. It gives you, uh, more of a, it's, I, I say it's a little more gritty. So if you're looking at Edinburgh and Glasgow, I would say the difference is that Edinburgh is very much a place where everybody goes to, um, when they visit Scotland, it's a great place. It has amazing castles and great history. And Glasgow is a little bit more gritty, but it, you really get to embed yourself and immerse yourself into the city there. Um, there's some great specialty courses there, including things like bas um, bagpipes. And it also has a functional anatomy lab where um, there's a cadaver lab where students can take classes there. Um, the housing is all about a 20 minute walk from uh, campus. And some of the other areas um, include uh, great English department, including Scottish literature and Scottish studies, uh, medieval history, and film and um, film and television, and then the sciences, uh, physics, engineering, um, some law courses for students who are interested in pre-law um, as well. So that's a little bit about Scotland court places. Um, Ireland, we'll start with Trinity College Dublin, which is located in the heart of Dublin. Um, they also have a wide variety of courses, but there are some, um, with, with any of these locations, there are some restrictions, but I mentioned that particularly with Trinity, because I know a lot of students are interested in English. Um, and so there are some restrictions in terms of the number of courses you can take and what level you need to be at for those. So um, I'll, again, I'll go into a little bit more of that when I pull up our website. Um, and lots of clubs and societies on campus, um, I, I think I may have mentioned, but if not, with all of these universities, as a student that is there as a visiting student, you're able to get involved with these clubs and societies. These include sports clubs and other just general information um, societies. So if you're uh, active on your campus at home and want to continue that activity, those activities while you're abroad, you do have the ability to do that. Um, Trinity College, all of our students are in apartments, which are about a 25 minute walk or commute from where you're living to where you're to, to campus, which is located in central uh, Dublin. Um, and uh, we have staff that are based right in Dublin as well. So if you have questions or concerns that come up, um, you have the opportunity to meet with them right there in Dublin. And actually going back, we also have offices in England, um, in London and in Edinburgh for our Scotland office there. We have staff that are located in all of those. And I'll talk a little bit about our staff in a minute. Um, and then uh, I think this, oh no, then uh, so University of University College Cork is located in the South Cork coast of Ireland. Um, they have some unique opportunities there if you're interested in Irish music or folklore or dance. Um, they also have courses in um, the STEM fields as well as um, modern languages, law, biological sciences, those types of things. We do have an optional pre-session course um, for the fall. So if you're interested in going in the fall, um, there are some uh, pre-session courses that get you there a little bit early. And a lot of these are field-based courses. So you're able, it's about, it's a three week course and you're able to go out and do um, some, some visiting, whether if it's a, a history or art history course, or there are some uh, science-based pre-session courses as well. 
Um, all of our housing is uh, in apartments and approximately a five or 10 minute walk from campus there. And then I think this is our final one. So Queen University Belfast um, is located in the uh, in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland in the city of Belfast. Um, it has a great international reputation in social justice, peace and reconciliation based on the um, some of the, the issues between Northern Ireland um, and Ireland in the past. So um, it has a good opportunity for you to do some of the studies in there. But on top of that, you'll also find areas of studies um, in uh, the sciences, humanities, all of that type of thing. Um, it's part of the UK's elite research group known as the Russell Group, which is many of the universities that I talked about in London as well are part of the Russell Group. And all of the housing is located um, on campus. So it's usually about a 10 minute walk from where you're living to where you're taking classes back to the central part of campus. Um, so that's a really brief overview of all of the different locations, just really quickly about STEM opportunities. So um, for STEM opportunities, we do have um, our Associate Dean of STEM, his name is Jesse. Um, he is our, um, the, the nice thing that Jesse is doing with our students is if you do need to do some curriculum matching, um, he's able to, if you send him a course description or a course syllabus for a course that you need abroad and you're having a hard time finding it, we will try and uh, match up something, get you a syllabus so you can bring back to your department to make sure that that's going to work. Um, we do also have some uh, STEM summer research. I don't talk a lot about that because I know most students at Northwestern do a semester program, but if you are interested in that, um, please feel free to ask some further questions about that as well. So I'm gonna go back to um, our website for a minute and go back to this, uh, the um, program finder that I talked about earlier. So what this does is if you go into this and choose an area of interest, so if you're looking at biochemistry and um, you know that you want to go to England, Oops. oh, there we go. Um, and you, you know you, know you want to go to London and you can choose the time frame if you want to go for fall or spring um, and the program type, um, most of them are that you guys are looking at are, are classroom based. So I'll just leave it at that. And what that's going to pull up is the different, the different options that are available. Now, again, not all of these are approved by uh, Northwestern. The three on here that are approved by Northwestern are King's, the King's College Health and Society and the Queen Mary. So I'm just gonna pull up one of these to give you a little bit more information about um, what to really look for on the website. The first thing that you'll see is um, a bit of the information about the university. On the right-hand side, this uh, side is really gonna give you a lot of the information that's gonna be most helpful to you. The first thing that you'll see is the GPA requirement. And that's going to have a recommended and a for consideration. For some schools, you'll see it will be the same like it is for King. So you need a 3.3 um, in order to be eligible for this program. For other locations, it might say 3.3 recommended and 3.0 for consideration. And what that means is if you don't have the 3.3, but you're close and have like a 3.1 or 3.0, um, we can still consider you for that program. The program or uh, the when we apply for you for that program, they may ask for an additional reference or an additional um, essay from you talking about why your GPA is not at the recommended level, but they will consider you for that program. So that's one place to look at, first of all. The next thing that you're gonna see is, is the course link. And this is really important because this is gonna give you a bit more information about each of the different universities and how they're structured. It's gonna generally give you how many credits that you'll be taking, how many courses you'll be taking at those universities and um, any special considerations. So some of the things to think about or to look for is under special considerations, it'll tell you um, what you need to know. So if you're a psychology, courses are only available for students um, applying for full academic year. Um, for other ones, it may say if you're looking at English courses like at Trinity, 
you can only take a certain number of English courses and they have to be at a certain level. So it will have some of the um, restrictions or special considerations there. The other thing that you'll get to is um, choosing the different courses and each of them will go to the course, the course modules page and that's what a course is called um, abroad. And what you'll be able to see is in each of these pages for each of these universities are going to be set up a little bit differently, but just to give you a sense of what you'll see. So if you look into chemistry, you'll see the different, the different courses that are available. And if you click into one of those, it's going to give you a little bit of um, and a little bit of information and you can click uh, for this one, you can click even further into it and it will give you a module description. It'll give you some information about assessment. Now, hopefully this will be enough for you to go to your department and get to know, to know whether or not you're going to be able to get credit for it. If not, if you come to us, we can try and get a, a, an actual syllabus from the university. That is not always going to be the case, but hopefully we'll be able to get that for you if you need it. Um, and again, it'll go into this about the different levels. So for Kings, we talk about the different levels here. For another university, it's set up differently, but this is where you're going to find how to decipher what you'll see in the, the course catalog for those universities and what levels mean and how, how many credits you take and how many courses you take. So it gives you a nice way to figure all that out. Again, both um, Northwestern, Sarah and the other advisors and Arcadia are here to help if there's any confusion. So by all means, just get in touch with us. So going back to this page, um, you'll also see the different options for housing. Now, for some, from, for some universities, the housing opportunities are very narrow. There might only be one housing opportunity that we have. For Kings, um, there are multiple opportunities. So uh, you'll see all the different opportunities that are available. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get your first choice, but it's gonna give you a little bit more information about what the different university or what the different housing options are, how far they are away from campus, and all of that type of information. Um, okay, going back again, there's you can click in to meet our staff to see the staff that we have in each country. As I said, we do have staff in all of our different locations, so you'll see all of them listed in here. Um, <clears throat> activities and excursions. So. Um, we do have activities and excursions in all of our different locations. Those, the only thing that is required um, for students is uh, our orientation and then any um, field-based activity that might be part of a course you're taking. And those generally are gonna be part of the university that you're at. The activities and excursions that Arcadia is doing is um, separate and, and optional for you. So this will give you just a bit of information about some of the excursions that we've done in the past. And again, many of these are pre-COVID, but we, like I said, we do have students that are currently abroad and have been doing uh, different excursions, maybe not necessarily all of these, but you'll get a sense of the types of excursions that we've done in the past here. Okay, and then going back to program dates, um, this is gonna give you some information where we may not necessarily have the dates up for the semester you're looking at. So if you're looking at fall 2022 um, and beyond, we don't have those dates up yet. However, what you can look at is the dates for the previous fall or the previous spring, just to get a sense of when things are going to start and end. They may change slightly for the, the next year, but they're generally going to be within a week or so of when the start date is for the semester that we're currently in or the semester that's coming up. Um, I think that's probably about it. Like the, uh, there's some other information, travel and visa information, uh, deadlines and that kind of stuff. So one of the things to look at is deadlines and what you'll find is um, as I mentioned, the uh, deadlines are really important to take a look at. So for instance, um, King's College has a super early deadline uh, in the beginning of January. So that's something to keep in mind, make sure you're checking uh, when those deadlines are to make sure you get your, your application in, um, in time. Particularly important in places like um, King's and Oxford, those are two that have really super early deadlines. Um, and Oxford is a once a year deadline. So if you want to apply for Oxford, whether it's fall or spring, you need to apply um, for, for that once a year deadline. 
Um, okay, I think that's it that I was going to go over on that page. We do also have scholarships that are available um, that you can find on our website. Um, you can apply for a scholarship when you're applying for the program. Um, and we also have student blogs that you can get a little bit more about the student perspective. So you can get, uh, feel free to go through and check out those as well. So going back to this, um, just quickly, um, we have uh, a little bit, I talked about most of these things already, but these are all the types of things that Arcadia is going to help you with um, as you get ready to go abroad. So course selection, housing, visa applications, airport pickups, all those types of things. Um, as I mentioned uh, throughout, we do have staff in all of our country and they're there to help you and support you. We want you to utilize them. We want you to utilize our staff in the US as you go through the application process. It's part of the reason why Northwestern works with um, Arcadia so that it can uh, alleviate some of the pressure on their staff to know everything and do everything for you. So we're really there to help you get settled, to help you get um, any sort of emergency situations that come up, whether it's uh, health, uh, academic, anything like that, our staff is there. You're gonna have 24 seven um, access and support uh, while you're abroad. Um, and as I mentioned, they are also doing excursions um, throughout. So whether you're in a city where our staff is located or in a city in the country, our staff is always there to support you. So even if you're going to um, University College Cork, our staff is in Dublin, but they are going to meet up with you. You're um, eligible to do all of the excursions that we do. Um, so you'll have access to our staff no matter what city you are in the country that you're studying in. So thinking about what your next steps are, um, obviously you're probably already meeting with or have met with um, the study abroad advisor with Sarah at your school. Um, you wanna utilize that program finder and check to make sure the programs that you're interested in are approved by uh, Northwestern. And then you can start an application in our portal at any point, but you do have to be approved by Northwestern before we will uh, admit you into a program. Our application portal um, will, so once you decide which program that you're going to get on, going to apply to and start that application, um, what you'll see populate on that portal is all the things that you need for your application. Now, different programs are gonna have different requirements. So for some programs, you may only need your transcript and um, a, a faculty recommendation. For other uh, places, you might need um, all those things as well as an essay uh, or a writing sample or things like that. So it really depends on which program that you're applying to. So your friend may be applying to one program and you're applying to something else and you may have two different, completely different uh, requirements. So just make sure you're looking at that portal and your checklist of things that need to get done. Um, all through that process, um, you will be assigned a program advisor once you have been um, once you've chosen the program that you will apply to, and that program advisor is the expert um, at Arcadia that is working with you through the application process. They know um, how things are set up for the different universities. They know um, what kinds of courses restrictions there are or things like that. So definitely utilize them um, all the way through. And as I mentioned, we do have um, scholarships that are available as well. So there's some information there um, about that. And I think that's it for uh, my, my thing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open it up for questions or first ask Sarah if there's anything that you want to add. Nope, I think that was, that was awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so yeah, open it up to questions. If there, um, if anyone has questions about particular programs, if you have questions that are um, that I might be able to answer about like the Northwestern application process deadlines, anything like that, feel free. Feel free to unmute yourself or stick it in the, in the chat. Hi, um, I have a quick question about the Oxford program. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering how many tutorials one would take if they were only there for the fall term. Typically you do, uh, for the fall, you do a major tutorial and a minor tutorial. So there's two. 
We do have some, um, you, some of the colleges we work with at, at um, Oxford now that are actually doing a pre-session. So we do have an opportunity if students, and I, I, that's something you would need to talk to Sarah about whether or not that's approved by Northwestern, but there are some options for a pre-session as well. But mostly students are doing um, a major class and a minor class, so two. Thank you. Other questions about any programs or how we structure anything or the application process? Hearing none. <laughs> I will share Kate's question from the chat, just you know, for the oh, yeah. for the purposes of the recording. Um, so she asked if you're applying to a competitive program, do you recommend applying to multiple programs? And the answer to that is yes. So Northwestern allows students to apply to up to two programs per term. So if you were looking at applying for fall of 22, let's say, and then you were interested in Oxford, um, which is a very competitive program, you could apply first choice to Oxford, but you could also have a backup program in mind. You wanted to stay in London and maybe do Queen or Queen Mary, um, or even if you were looking at, you know, other, a, a different affiliated program in a different place that would also be, um, that would also be allowed and also recommended. And from Arcadia, um, we, we've been a little bit more, uh, lacks in terms of letting students apply to multiple programs at once. Usually we ask students to just apply for one program, but to have a backup ready if you um, if it is a competitive program um, in case you don't get in. We have been allowing students par partially because of COVID and some of the, the things that are happening with universities to apply for uh, two programs if, if we believe that there's a possibility that you might not get in or there might be it's just a competitive program or there's um, some other thing going on. So with Arcadia as well, um, there is some uh, opportunity to apply for more than one program. And, and I will say, you know, it is good to have a backup option. Um, like uh, Sarah said, places like Oxford and King's, King's Health and Society um, are, are competitive and even more so competitive right now because there's such a backup backlog of students who want to go. So um, luckily, we just found out that I think all of our King students got in for the fall. We were very excited about because um, we did have a huge group. But um, I know that's a very, um, a very popular place for Northwestern students. So we do say do tell students to have a backup um, ready just in case. And the nice thing about places like King and Oxford is that those deadlines are so early that you should know before the, because most of the other deadlines are not until later on in the semester. So even if we need to sw switch you to another option, um, we do have that opportunity because the deadlines are so much further down the line. Yeah. 